It's November, that means it's uh, the Thanksgiving season, and so for the next couple of weeks we're going to kind of reflect on what it means to be thankful. What, what is that about? We're going to turn to Psalm 116. Psalm 116 is what we're going to read today. It says, I love the Lord, for He heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because He turned His ear to me, I will call on Him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I was overcome by trouble and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the simple-hearted. When I was in great need, he saved me. Be at rest once more, O my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you, O Lord, have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed, therefore I said, I am greatly afflicted. And in my dismay I said, all men are liars. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have freed me from my chains. I will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. Psalm 116 is a song to thank God. All the psalms here in the middle of our Bible, those are all songs. We, we still sing to the Lord today. Singing goes back all the way to the beginning of human history. It's kind of a part of who we are. To, to sing. We sing about things that we're excited about, things that we're thankful for, and how much more so should we be singing to the Lord and what He has done for us. And this psalm here, it doesn't just say, hey, thanks God, I, I appreciate that. It, it gushes. If you caught that when we were reading it, this, this song just gushes thanksgiving to God. And if we had even just a small idea of what God has done for us, how much He has given us, we would be gushing as well, I think. In verse 11, let's look at what this psalmist is going through. In verse 11, he says, all men are liars here. This guy, people, were, people had betrayed him. What, some experience that he has, we don't really know who wrote this or, or what exactly was going on. It's kind of, written so that a lot of us could identify with it. But whoever wrote this, he had been betrayed in some way. And, and we know what it's like to be stabbed in the back, to be betrayed, to have friends who, who aren't there for us at times, and, uh, and to be let down by other people. People betray us, don't they? But God does not. God is always there. And while other people lie and are interested in our, our own selfish, selfish purposes. God doesn't lie. We can trust Him. In verses 3 and 5, it talks about how, how the psalmist was staring death in the face. Especially in verse 3, the cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. Whatever was going on here, we don't know if, if maybe there were people out to, to take his life or maybe he was really sick and, and at death's door. And, but whatever it was, he was staring death in the face. He was in this moment where he was saying, I, I'm going to die. And maybe, maybe some of you have, have been in situations where, where it looked really bad. You were in some pretty grave danger and you maybe thought to yourself, this is it. I'm going to die. 
That was this, that was this guy here. He said to himself, I'm going to die. This is the end. And so he calls out to the Lord. It says cords of death there. Now, maybe, maybe, maybe you're like me when, when I hear the word cords. I think of like a, a, a cord from a, a TV set or, or a lamp or something like that that plugs into the wall. But for, for them, cords meant, meant ropes. And back then, especially, ropes and these, these cords, this meant slavery. Lots of people were slaves back then. And when you were enslaved, it meant you were bound with ropes. You were not free. You were dragged along and you were used for other people's purposes. You were, you were enslaved. You were in bondage. And that's what he was saying. He was in bondage to death. Death was going to overtake him and there was nothing that he could do about it. He was stuck there. And so he cries out to the Lord, Lord, save me. Because he cannot help himself. And in a number of places here, at least four times, it says God snatched him from death. Verses 1, 6, 7, and 8. He heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy the Lord protects the simple-hearted. When I was in great need, he saved me. And seven, be at rest once more, O my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. And then in eight, you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. So again and again, this guy is just gushing. The Lord saved me. The Lord saved me. And then he says it again in different words because this is so, so valuable to him, so amazing. He was snatched from the grave. When I was studying for this passage, I came across some, some other ancient literature, and um, it points out how there's a lot of similarities in this psalm here of giving thanks to God with, with other, other nations and the way that they thanked their gods for the good things that happened to them. But one thing that really stood out is that with other gods, when you worship those gods and you adhere to their theology, you have to manipulate those gods. You have to do sort of magic and superstitious sort of things to get them to do what you want them to do. And so in the other psalms of thanksgiving from the other nations with the other gods, there's a lot of appeasing their god with magic and ritual a lot of omens and uh, just trying to surround yourself with fortune tellers and people who are going to give you good signs and, and doing little things here and there to get your God to do what you want him to do. One thing that this psalm here really reflects is that we, we can't manipulate our God. We, we can't. We can call out to him and we can ask for his help. And, and he will help us. But we can't force him to help us. God, God acts on love. He, he doesn't respond well when we try to manipulate him. Do not put the Lord your God to the test, as it, as it says. Our God cannot be manipulated. He can only be thanked. We can thank him for what he's done for us. But we can't force him to make him do what we want him to do. And sometimes we have our plans and we have our thoughts, the way that we would want things to go, and sometimes, sometimes they go those ways. Sometimes things happen the way we want them to, but sometimes they don't. We can't change God. We can just respond to who He is. We can reflect on His goodness, His grace to us, and it's not going to always go like we want it to. But the bottom line with God is that He is good, and He is gracious, and He does whatever, sometimes it's difficult to realize this at times, but He does have even our best interests in mind. He's a good Father. Let's look at the screen here together. Doesn't this teaching of God's grace make people indifferent and wicked? No. 
it is impossible for those grafted into Christ by true faith not to produce fruits of gratitude. To know the Lord is to thank Him. If you know the Lord, you know that He is good. You know that He doesn't always give you what you want, but He is always good. And He is always loving. And to know Him is to thank Him. The more we know Him, the more we will thank Him. Whether we have to or not, it's impossible for us to know Him and not to give Him thanks. Now, there's thanks, and then there's gratitude. And they're, they're similar. They, they overlap quite a bit. But there's, there's some differences here. Thankfulness is an act or habit that recognizes a kindness. Okay? So, when you say thank you to somebody, you're acknowledging that they did something nice for you. So, I was... Uh, I was in a locker room one time and, and somebody had a bunch of change and it just kind of spilled all over the floor there and I kind of felt bad for this guy and so I kind of helped him pick up his change and he said thank you to me. Or maybe you're, you're going into a store somewhere and somebody's coming up close behind you so you just hold the door open for them and they say thank you, that was nice. Or maybe it's Christmas time and, and you give somebody a present and they say thank you. It's a kindness of some sort. Saying thank you, giving thanks. That's somebody did something nice for you. So you say thank you. You acknowledge that. So that's that's thanks. But look at verse twelve here. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? Verse 12, gratitude is a heart's motivation to give back. When you have gratitude in your heart, you're not just thankful. You are thankful, but it's, it's beyond that. You want to give back. How can I repay you for all the good that you've done for me? What, what can I do to bless you like you've blessed me? When you're at a restaurant and, you're, and you are going to pay your bill, you tip your waiter or waitress, right? There's a reason why they call it gratuity. Because you're giving back to them for something that they have done for you. When we are grateful and are showing gratitude to God for what He has done for us, we, we give back to Him. Not because we have to, but because we can't help it. Because if we know the Lord and what He's done for us, we can't help but be thankful and to show gratitude. So gratitude is something that you would have if somebody saved your life. You, you were going to die and somebody snatched you from the jaws of death. How can I repay you for the good that you've done for me? Or let's say you're going to college and you weren't sure how you're going to pay for that because it's really expensive, right? Let's say somebody came in and said, you know what, I'm going to pay for your entire college, all four years, the whole thing. How, how can I repay you? Or if somebody forgives something that you've done that you felt was just unforgivable, how, how can I repay you? That's what God has done for us. He's, he's saved our life. He's paid our debt. How can I repay the Lord for all of His goodness to me? Gratitude is an attitude. It's not just saying thanks. It's saying, how can I repay you? How can I repay you? Gratitude is about how you see the world, what you see in the mirror, how you receive God's blessings. When God gives you things, do you just say thanks? Or do we show gratitude? There's kind of two, 
two different attitudes that you can have in life. And the first one is gratitude. The other one, maybe we could call pride. When somebody gives you something nice, if you have a proud attitude, maybe you deserve it. Maybe this was something that, of course, you would give that to me because I'm so wonderful. Or is there a, a, a thankful attitude, a gratitude attitude? So if you have gratitude, the first aspect of that, and we'll contrast them both here, is you're going to have a focus on God and others versus yourself. If you're proud, if, or to the extent that we're proud, we all are proud to some extent, right? We're going to focus on ourself. And we're going to think, okay, what, what do I get out of things? What do I get out of life? How's my life benefiting me? Whereas if we have a gratitude attitude, we're going to think about, okay, how can I serve God because of what he's done for me? How can I serve and be a blessing to other people? There's two different attitudes that we can have in life. In verse 16, he, he says, I am your servant. You have freed me from my chains. He's saying, Lord, I'm your servant. You, you saved me. How can I repay? I'm your servant. Are you the Lord's servant today? Or, or are we our own servants? The, the second distinction here is that if we have a gratitude attitude, we're going to focus on relationships, whereas if we're proud, we're going to be materialistic. This really, this really shows itself like in the, in the Christmas holiday, doesn't it? There's, there's kind of two ways to approach this holiday. We can either be about relationships being together with people, you know, giving and receiving and, and just enjoying time together. Or we can be about, okay, what do I get out of this? You know, how can I have the, the best looking house or how can I get the best gift that I want? There's, there's, there's two, two different attitudes that we have here. We either focus on what God has given or we can focus on what others have that we don't have. And we will either be, because of we're focusing on relationships, we'll either be generous, we'll be willing to share what we have, or we'll clutch the things that we have and be about the things of this world. Because we're proud. Number three, we'll either be worshipful or we will have entitlement. Worship is a, is a gesture of gratitude. I hope that's why you're here this morning. Because, because there's a God who's done great things for us. He deserves our worship. He, he deserves us singing to Him and speaking with Him and gathering together in His name. God, God deserves our worship today. Or there's entitlement. What do I deserve? As opposed to what can I do for God? What do I, what do I deserve there's praise and there's complaining. Usually when we're focused on what we deserve, we tend to focus on what's wrong and what we don't have, right? When God saves our, our life, we don't just send him a thank you card. We, we, we live our lives to worship him. Verses 14 and 18 both say, I will fill, fulfill my vows in the presence of all his people. That's, that's what we do when we gather here together. We're fulfilling our vows together in the presence of all his people. Worship. If we have an attitude of gratitude, we're going to be joyful. Whereas if we're proud, we're going to be stressed. Because if we're focusing on the things of this world, the materialism, what we deserve, we're going to realize that there's all kinds of threats to that. There's, a lot that. there's a lot that we can't control in life, is there? And we, are all, we all have some stress, don't we? Some of us more than others, perhaps. But that usually comes from, or at least I know for myself, it's usually when I'm focusing on what's going wrong in my life and what I can't control as opposed to what God has given to me already. 
We can delight in God's unchangeable promises and have joy. Or we can focus on what we stand to lose in life. We can focus on what God has given or what we can lose. We can be joyful or stressed. Number five, enjoyment or gluttony. When you're sitting down to eat a meal, do you savor that food or do you devour it? There's a difference there. When God has given us something good, like even just a good meal, do we just, do we savor it and enjoy it or do we just devour it? This is mine, I'm going to claim it. Or, this is from God, I'm going to enjoy it. There's two ways we can even eat our food. One that reflects God's goodness to us, and one that reflects pride and entitlement. Do we savor or do we devour? God made food taste good so that we'd thank Him for it. Enjoy it. Thank Him for it. Then there's contentment or envy. Number six. We can either have contentment in our attitude, in our hearts, or we can be envious. We can compare ourselves with others. We can see the glass half full or we can see it half empty. If we're proud, we're only seeing what we don't have, what we are entitled to. We're seeing what other people have, and we're wishing that we had those things. Or maybe thinking less of them because they have it and we don't. What's your attitude? There's a parable in the Bible about how God gives some people five talents, some people two and some people won. In the end, the person with five gained five more, and the person with two gained two more, but the reward and the blessing at the end from the master was the same. Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I'm going to put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. So, if maybe we have two talents... If we're going to have a pride attitude, we're going to think, this person over here has five. What's wrong with this? Is he, they, are they better than me? Come on, God, really? Or we're going to be like, hey, I have, I have two. I'm going, to, I'm going to do what I can with these. Two is as good as five. In the end, two is as good as five. Number seven. How do we respond to our salvation? When you hear that Jesus has taken your sins away, given you eternal life, made you forever right with God, how do you respond to that? You'll either respond with gratitude or you respond with just, just thanks. If we're proud, we're going to be like, a little part of us would be like, well, of course God saved me. I'm a wonderful person. I deserve this. We'll say, hey, thanks, God. That was, that was a nice thing that you did for me. Or are we going to respond with gratitude? How can I repay the Lord for all of his goodness to me? Lord, what can I do for you? Our attitude of gratitude is usually in direct proportion to how, how undeserved we see God's gift. Are we, are we deserving of God's grace? Or are we undeserving? Jeremiah 
Jesus not only saved our lives, but also our eternities. Maybe, maybe God has saved your life. Maybe at one point you were staring death in the face and, and maybe you said, oh Lord, save me. You're thinking, I'm going to die. Lord, I need your help. And maybe God saved you. But God has not just saved your life. He saved your eternity. We can't measure that. We can measure a life in, in years, but we can't measure an eternity. How, how can I repay the Lord for all of his goodness to me? We just had communion together. Well, sometimes, sometimes the, the communion bread and the communion cup are sometimes called, in some circles anyways, called Eucharist. Has anybody ever heard that before? One, two, oh, okay, a few people, okay. Eucharist, right? You know what Eucharist means? It means thanks. It means thanksgiving. Communion, bread, and cup are sometimes called Eucharist, which means thanksgiving. When we participate in the Lord's Supper together, this is one expression of thanks, an act of gratitude for what God has done for us. When we take together the body and blood of the Lord, we are saying thank you to God. And not just thanks, this is supposed to move us to deeper faith and greater love for one another. Jesus and the cross it's not just for saying thanks, but it's for gratitude. We thank God out of an expression of gratitude. It's a deeper attitude that we have. That we were undeserving. We were sinners. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So this is Thanksgiving season here. Are we going to say thanks? Or are we going to have gratitude? Let's not just say thanks. Let's develop an attitude of gratitude. Let's bow our heads and let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we can only scratch the surface as to how great of a gift you have given to us in Jesus Christ, eternal life, forgiveness of sins. We pray, Lord, that we would take this to heart and that we would have an attitude of gratitude and that we would not just say thanks, but that we would look for ways for how we can give back to you, just like our psalmist said today. And we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.